Allen Iverson lived up to his billing as a number one draft pick. His offensive skills and speed made him unstoppable. Even for the all-time greats like Michael Jordan, the man called the answer was a rookie of the year and made 11 all-star teams. 11. Iverson was MVP in 2001 and finished with more than 24,000 points in his 14 seasons. But his bad boy image influenced a generation of players but also led to problems off the court. Iverson was controversially jailed in high school, and he had other run-ins with the law during his NBA career. Now he's opening up about his childhood, his arrest, basketball, and everything in between. In a very revealing Showtime Sports documentary, it's called Iverson. You know about love to Ben Allen. Little kids all over the place would always come up to me and say, you're Allen Iverson's coach, you know. I want to be like Allen. Okay, I got all okay. the sneakers everywhere. No, I got all the sneakers. He's my favorite player and he's the best player ever to me. Allen was a role model. Good or bad, he was a role model. He was a person that was so real. The tats, the cornrows. Why you gotta leave? Like, this whole thing was just like, this is who I am. And people loved him for that. But it's a gift and a curse. The way Allen carried himself, the way he dressed, some people liked it, some didn't. Yep, Allen Iverson is joining us at the table. He's still got the tats and the cornrows, and you are still Allen Iverson. It's so good to see you, Allen. I see you too. Good. I have to say, you know, <laughs> I have to say, when I looked at that documentary, before I looked at the documentary, I had one judgment of you, and then after I looked at the documentary, I had another one. Right. I love that it starts with the song, um, I'm Just a Soul Who's Trying to Be Good. Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Right. That sort of sums up your life, doesn't it? You feel very, you have felt very misunderstood. Definitely. Um, because people really don't know who I am. I'm judged, obviously, by the idiot box mm -hmm. and um, the newspaper. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to do this um, because I wanted kids to uh, see that, you know, they can make it regardless. Mm -hmm. um, you hit roadblocks in life, but um, I'm living proof that you can overcome those road, uh, roadblocks and become what you want to become. But let's talk about your roadblocks, because you were in prison. Yeah. From high school, you were jailed, but you were you, you were sentenced to 15 years in prison, right. uh, called, uh, charged with maiming some people in a bowling alley. And the videotape shows you leaving the bowling alley before all of that stuff happened, and you were sentenced to 15 years in prison. Yeah, definitely. I felt like it was unjust. Yeah. But I mean, I, you know, I felt like I couldn't cry about it. You know, all I prayed for and asked God for was another opportunity at life. You credit Tom Brokaw. Yeah. Um, Cause he Tom did Brokaw a piece. did a lot. Yeah. He did a lot for me. Um, Governor Wilder did a lot for me by giving me the clemency. And I feel like John Thompson uh, saved my life. Yeah. You know, because he gave me another opportunity when everybody stopped recruiting me. I was recruited mm -hmm. by everybody in the country mm -hmm. in both sports. And once that incident happened, you know, everybody went away and he gave me an opportunity. I want to spend a minute on Georgetown because Alan and I were actually classmates together. We're in, in, in Georgetown at the same time. Talk were about you all dating? No. <laughs> no I had... and Alan, that would have been a story. My girl now was my girl then. Oh, <laughs> so... good, 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 good. <laughs> Talk about talk about the influence of Georgetown and, and, and Coach Thompson. As you said, had it not been for Coach Thompson, where would, what would have happened to Allen Iverson? Who knows? Yeah. Like I said, I mean, yeah. he, saved, he saved my life. He gave me another opportunity. And all I needed was one. Mm -hmm. All I needed was one chance. And uh, God sent him to me. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to know about you? Mm -hmm. um, that I'm not the person that everybody make me out to be. Then who are you? Um, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a friend. Um, I think I got the biggest heart in the world. Um, a lot of times, uh, that's not a good thing. Is um, <laughs> on, the sport, curse. on the sports level, do you know anybody who had more skills than you did at your best? No. No. I mean, I, I'm, I'm the biggest Michael Jordan fan there is. Yeah. Um, he made me want to play the sport. I always wanted to be like Mike. I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. Watch this. Watch but, this video. You still remember that crossover, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember. But, <laughs> no, but look at what Alan, look, look at what LeBron him. James said about you. Pound for pound, probably the greatest player who ever played. I saw Julius Irving the other day. He said he's a great man. He's a hell of a player. He's talking about you. Mm. I'm getting <laughs> chill bumps running through my body because I have a lot of respect for both of those guys. Well, Larry Brown said you could have been the most popular player in the league. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, 
I didn't realize the magnitude of who I was at that time because I was in the moment. And um, I had to fall down a lot of times to be able to get back up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just didn't realize that I guess I'm, at times I might have been too young, might have been too naive at times, and um, didn't understand, understand who I really was to um, a whole culture. Can, can I ask you about, because that, you know, your, I think your basketball skills are unmatched and, and well-recognized, but a lot of controversy has been on your tats right. and your jewelry, and also that, you know, you made $150 million and that now you're struggling financially. Is that true? Did that's, you... a, that's, a, that's a myth. It's that's a myth. A, that's a rumor. I mean, one Which thing, part? The, the, the fact that I'm struggling in any part of my life, right. yeah. you know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's what the documentary is for as well, you know. Um, I really don't care too much about what people that don't care about me say mm -hmm. about me, but a lot of times, you know, I get tired of defending myself, and I'll be 40 years old um, next month, and I'm so sick of defending myself. Well, but the documentary so does a lot. It does a lot because it, my fans care about me, and they hear these they, rumors and too. It's so they well still done. care about the you. Documentary you know I mean? Iverson. The so. documentary show, shows you in a 